This is Blaze, and this piece is entitled Co-Parenting. One has to rise and stand, devise a plan to be a leader in the face of sheer meltdown. Having to show strength, restraint, be stern and decisive while composing oneself now. Love has got to be fully exposed to whom you love that does the best in parenting their immediate loved ones. Please note, give your heart outright while uplifting the daughters and never forget to hug sons. Co-parenting is a job that requires the most special traits and be honest, truthful, and apologetic in noticeable made mistakes. Due to the crucial part of life that has yet to come, you must be there for your children. They gotta be primed. When filling the shoes of a misunderstood, misdirected, or just missing parent, one must show quality time. Please note, serious involvement has front stage your current status of playing the field when your mind blows to your soul because you know that your heart has kneeled to obligation. Stepping out of character is like robbing patience taking advantage of their disadvantages, sinking their hopes and dreams like titanic ships. Be there to help them draw, throw a football, help them to stay inside the lines when they color or better yet, let them know that it's okay to get upset, but you will not fight each other. Homework is part of advancing in school and you must put your wants on the back burners. Facts, turn up. Assisting them in success is what is cool and all else will show and prove that you were and or are a fool while possibly raising them. But why not see yourself praising them and building up their comprehension? And when it's time to mention how they conquered their earth, they'll immediately uplift you in value by how they honor your worth. All in all, what I am saying is show how much you love your significant other while being there to help show her children undying love, just like God has continued to show you from up above. And if you have to leave, please return, because parts of them will and have died in their mental and emotional cemetery, cemeteries while you play the role of a dove. Co-parenting. Thank you for tuning in to episode 29 with Uncommon, Uncommon Women. Women. I'm Shanira. And I'm Jenny Lee. And I'm Jasmine Kuhnhow. So today we'll be speaking on co-parenting. We will give advice on ways to communicate with co-parenting, tips for step-parents, and how to avoid conflict and disagreement with other parents. We also have Jasmine Kuhnhow back with us as a guest speaker to give her insight on the topic as well. Please be, li please be able to go back and listen to her testimony on season one, episode 20. So we are gonna talk about, there's 10 ways to communicate with uh, while you're co-parenting. Uh, first one is be professional. Yeah, you definitely wanna be mature about communicating with your other your ex or the person that you were with um you don't want to go in loud and thinking things are going to be your way in no way you definitely want to be have an open mind with mindset in regards to communicating with them and you mainly um in that you want to treat the other person how you would want to be treated in that situation as well yeah yeah like in the end, you gotta set up boundaries, um, mm -hmm. and you gotta communicate in a way in a way where it's just it's about the child or the children that you guys have. Yeah, definitely want to be a listening ear, and not always going into the mindset of what you say is how it's gonna be without actually listening and hearing out what they what they want to talk about in regards to a specific situation. Absolutely, I agree. So do I. Uh, also, number two, is make sure make sure it's about the kids and keep communication. Yeah, so keep it at a strict point level in regards to not worrying about what they're doing outside of 
anything that doesn't have to do with the kids. You know, don't worry about the relationship that they're in. Don't worry about, mm-hmm. you know, what they're doing outside of hours when it has nothing to do with the kids. Try to keep it on a focus about the children. Mm-hmm. As long as it's a healthy environment. Right. And you, right. you want to keep your feelings out of it. Right. And yes. do what's best for the child, but not necessarily what's best for yourself in the situation. Right. Always keep the kid first. Yes. yes. It should always, always be about the children and their needs. Nothing more and nothing less from that aspect, period. Yeah. So if you have any resentment against your ex, um, you need to put your differences aside, put your feelings aside. And just realize that it's in the best interest for the children. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. Don't fight in front of the kids. Never, ever fight in front of the kids. Um, That can cause uh, resentment. Um, The children can become resentful. Um, They can also have angry feelings. You can have resentment towards each other as both parents. um, Angry feelings towards each other. Um, even find a time where you guys can have an actual adult conversation and so you both can communicate when the children aren't around. Right. I mean, not only that, is that what you really want your child to see? Is right, that, right. Exactly. Is that how you want your child to look at you? Is mm-hmm. that what you want to display to your child? Is that what you want your child to go and tell your fr- his friends, you yeah. know, or mm-hmm. her friends? Right. You know, it's, it's just you want to keep it mutual and you mm-hmm. want to... Lead by example. Exactly. You definitely Absolutely. want to lead by example. Absolutely. Yes. Agree. Or even agree to disagree and move on. Right, right. You definitely want to have an understanding on both parties that, yep. you know, uh-huh. you don't want to talk bad about your children uh-huh. uh, with one another. Right. And you don't want to talk bad to each other because yeah. the animosity in, in the room and atmosphere oh, can yeah. also play a big part on the children as right. well, emotional and um, mental. Because they're definitely going to pick yeah, that up. That, right. is, uh, that is actually uh, most common Causes of learn to negative effects of divorce on children, especially. Right. Yeah, and right. we'll definitely get onto that when we speak on divorce. Absolutely. Yeah, that is um, not also, it can also, that'll oh, make the kids feel like whose side they should take. Oh, that's my mom. That's my dad, but I love my dad, but I know my dad's wrong, but I know my right. mom's wrong. Right. And that causes that cause a lot of, you know, they get conflict. They, right. conflict for And them. not only that, we have to really, really think about the long-term effect yep. that causes on the child when they grow up in a household where all they see is their parents fighting. Arguing. Yep, right. And arguing. Mm-hmm. You yes. know, even whether, even if the homes are separate. But nope. all I know is my parents never got along. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. not necessarily healthy right. for your child. So and it, you it shows them that. bad habits exactly. in regards to healthy relationships. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. Yes, I agree as well. Don't put your children in the middle. That's mm. a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. If you have to communicate anything uh, with the other parent, you I recommend to communicate it with them first prior to actually speaking to the child. Um, I co-parent personally right now, and there has been such circumstances where we've had scheduled plans for the weekend, and... Um, my father's son would make arrangements without talking, without communicating. And I feel as though to keep the peace or to keep us both on the same page, mm-hmm. it's it's best for you to communicate first with the parent before right. speaking to the child, right. no matter how old they are. Because now yeah. we have kids with cell phones these days at eight and nine years old, and that's great to great way to communicate with the children. But if it's making arrangements, I think it's best to talk to the parent first. Absolutely. Yeah, because they're not a messenger you know, it it, it does because I've seen it happen um, from experience uh, when you're trying to call the parent and the parent's not picking up or you're trying to, or the child's telling you this. And then, yeah, so it does, it, cause, it does, causes a lot of confusion. It causes con- mm-hmm. confusion yeah. and then... And it, it also affects the child in the end also right. as well. Right. Because you don't want the child feeling guilty. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, for being caught in the middle and having to make his own decisions. Or their fault. You don't right. want them to feel like it's their fault. And not only that, you as the parent, you don't want to always look like the bad parent oh, when yeah, you're right. the one that's saying, <laughs> oh, yeah. no, 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 <laughs> you cannot do this or no, well, yeah. you cannot go here. And then, you know, other said parent is saying, well, mom said or, or dad, dad said, said mm-hmm. you know, you can't do X, Y, and Z. So I think it's better to have an open line of communication between the parents and mm-hmm. um, 
if need be, once you get to that point and you want to have a discussion with the child, then that's fine too. But I do think that it has to be a mutual open line of right. communication yep. between mm-hmm. the parents. Definitely boundaries. Absolutely. Yep. Make the commitment to your kids and communicate regularly. Yes. So I think consistency is very important in regards to co-parenting. I know as parents and we have our lives with everything we have else. Oh, yeah. Everything else going on. I think at least if you're unable to get your child on a specific day that you communicate with them, you know, talk Mm -hmm. to them. It doesn't always have to be um, spending time, Mm -hmm. but even talking to them and communicating with them and letting them know what's going Mm -hmm. on is good as well because as adults, we sometimes want to do things our way and we don't actually communicate with the kids when they should be interacting and involved with it too because Mm -hmm. they have feelings, you know. And I think it comes to a point where you have to be the best, better judgment of the age in regards to communicating with them because you know if they're they're five and six and they're not on that mature level to be able to speak to them that you're not going to be able to do this that in the third then that's something that you need to communicate with the parent correct mm-hmm. correct um also like you gotta like especially when it comes to commitment we as parents both parents should be able to make the children feel like they're both actively involved in their yes. lives yes 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 you know? and then not only that like as parents, and I know sometimes it's hard to like even communicate, but communicating on a daily basis, especially who has the child, and even if the child isn't with you that one, but communicating with each other on a daily basis can be a little bit hard, but I think it's best, especially when it's given the commitment to the children. Correct. Because that way they know, because I can't be sitting there uh, calling my, you know, to follow my kids today and communicating or texting him to today, and then maybe, you know... But sometimes, like, I know sometimes, like, they don't get their texts or, you know, maybe they're working or something. But sometimes, as the other parents, sometimes I'll be like, hey, you know, did be you get my text? Right. Yeah. Be right. understanding. Right. Hey, did, right. you get my, mm-hmm. did you get my text, by the way? So that way the kids know, like, mom, because that way the kids are not on you. But like, mom, you know, did you text dad? You know, did mm-hmm. this get? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because kids will be like that because, oh, well, am I going with dad this day? Because, you know, right. so, yeah. Also, um... Stay on topic. Yes. True. Yes, yes. <laughs> Stay on topic. Stay in your lane. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be adding unnecessary discussions mm-hmm. or emotions into questions that you're asking. Um, I know there's times where, you know, the other partner can be difficult and and they want to respond back with a whole bunch of emotions and arguments and stuff that has nothing to do with the children. If if you have those type of difficult, and we'll talk about difficult um, co-parenting as well, but if you have those type of situations, just answer the question. Don't respond. Don't respond negatively in regards to their text message or their they're, if you're on the phone with them, them communicating right, with you. Just right. focus on the question that they're answering, and if they're not okay with that, let it go. And even if you need to redirect Mm -hmm. in the conversation (laughs) and wheel it back in feel definitely feel free to do that Mm -hmm. you know what I mean because you don't want to continue to draw negativity to the conversation the main focus is the child and that's what you want to keep oh yeah exactly and and it should be like on point keep it brief like blah 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 blah. let's this is what's going on are we doing this and that's it because sometimes People get out of topic. <laughs> right. And then you don't even take care of what the initial yeah, topic exactly. was about. Right. So. right. Concentrate on now and the future. Hmm. Okay. I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like. I mean, what are maybe possibly goals that are that you both have set for the child currently that would lead into something later on for the future, and I okay. only can speak that on that sense. because vacations, for I didn't instance, think about that. vacations, sports. Like for me, sports. My son mm-hmm. plays uh, travel soccer, and you know, in the beginning, he didn't want to do that, but his mm-hmm. dad thought it was a good idea for him to do that because a later on down the line, this is something that could possibly get you scholarship career, for right. school or mm-hmm. a career or what have you. So it's like sometimes you. 
definitely need to work on the now and the later. Yeah. But okay. you do need to be on the, the same page too. and yeah. communicate it so yeah. that both parents are in agreement mm-hmm. with that. Yeah. And I think that plays a toll in regards to boundaries. Correct. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. Def- I definitely believe, you know, if y'all already have an agreement in regards to a custody situation, even if it's not in the courts, I think that if you do decide to try something new, that you are keeping the other parent involved with any changes in regards to your schedule mm-hmm. that you've already have in place. Mm-hmm. Right. Very important. Very important. If you need a day where you know that you're going to go away and it's not your weekend, it's your, it's, it's your weekend to have the kids, you need to speak to the other parent ahead of time to see what their schedule is like if you want to make arrangements for them to go over their house if not if it's if it's not working for them don't get upset or get mad because you got something to do and the other parent is not available make other arangements correct exactly make other arrangements you can't get Mm -hmm. mad at the other parent for an agreement that you do not have i agree yeah and especially when it comes to how even though being in separate homes on how you're going to raise them and support them as they grow up yes right 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 definitely Keep your feelings aside versus just a child. Yes. <laughs> and as you would say, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. <laughs> it says, be polite and civil when communicating with your co-parent. It's always important. True. It is. I mean, it is. Because you do want to, like we said before, you want to remain uh, mutual. You want to stay on the same page. Mm-hmm. And you want to, the more positive the relationship is, I really feel, between the parents... <laughs> It's the more more peace peace. and the easier it is to co-parent and get things done in the best interest of the child. Exactly. And and the only thing that also, like you said, is also in the best interest. But when the kids see that, you know, it doesn't cause them stress. Absolutely. They're not... Yeah, they can feel it. The kid can feel it. The kid can feel it regardless, and they don't have to grow up in the same home. But the tension is there to still see what's going on. Like, okay, we didn't. Like, no, I didn't grow up with my mom and dad together, but I never saw my mom and dad fight. Mm Yeah, they Mm -hmm. always got along. You know what I mean? That's what you want your kid Mm -hmm. to see. And I'm not speaking on myself Mm -hmm. as far as growing up, but I mean just in general as a child. You don't want them to see that. You want them to grow up like, okay, I had you know my mom lived here with her husband, or my dad Mm -hmm. you know was with his wife, but everybody got along for the sake of me oh mm-hmm. yeah and you know? i agree like and most of all like not too many people have that but i think that on the positive note the ones that do have that have a really good chance of like really growing up without having so much stress and right thinking like right. oh my god what's gonna happen today what's gonna right. happen tomorrow? right right oh, my parents ever gonna get along or even mm-hmm. looking for positive relationships relationships when they yep. get older yes mm-hmm. because yeah. i'm i'm a firm believer in you attract Foundation. what you know mm-hmm. yeah you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying and it's it it can be very detrimental in what you see growing up and how you are treated in relationships and what you accept. Yes. You know, and that's not even just as or women. Compromise. That's boys too. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. And, you know, men too. So I do think it's it, it needs to be very healthy for a child growing up seeing positive positivity, you know, and yes. being surrounded by love on Absolutely. both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you're listening. That can be hard at times. <laughs> it definitely is. Because sometimes you already go in there like, nope, I already know what's going to happen. I already know yes, what I'm going to say. Yes. But just be an open ear and listen. Listen right. to what's yeah, going on. Yeah, because sometimes you want to hear what we want to hear. Sometimes <laughs> you want to say what we want to say. And sometimes the other person is interrupting. Mm-hmm. And that's how confrontation happens. Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. So it's got to be just... Be clear about it and like, hey, you know, slow down because sometimes when you, there's always a misunderstanding, a miscommunication, mm-hmm. I'm, it, it, it causes a lot. You get your chance to talk. Mm-hmm. I get my chance to talk. Don't talk over it, me. Yes, don't talk over <laughs> me. I won't yeah. talk over you and we mm-hmm. bring it yep. together. And that's that. Yep. Always look for compromise. That can be a hard one too, because some most of the times you go into something already set, like this is how it's going to be, this is how I want it to be, you know what I mean? But then at the same time, you still have to kind of be willing to compromise with the other party, mainly too if it benefits the other child. And I know you don't want to hear that. I, I'm not going to say that. I, I'm, I was going to say, I think it depends on the relationship. If y'all, if y'all have that type of relationship, if y'all are besties, but y'all ain't together and y'all both mm-hmm. have y'all own relationships and y'all able to discipline the kids and be like, you know, this is what we do in our house. It would be best if you could do it on your house, you know? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so it all depends on the relationship. I know it's times where it's like, 
you got to have some type of friendship for it to be peaceful. True. Yeah. So there's times when I'm like, I can't figure it out of my house. I'll call my son's father like, what do you suggest with this? Right. You know, he, right. this ain't happening. What, what's your opinion? So it also gives them a little confidence that you you take their advice in a positive aspect as well yeah. right it's not always your way you you're you're calling to get their feedback in regards to how to discipline your child or ways to communicate with the child or how, what works for you right. so that it can work for my house right. so that we can mm-hmm. have an understanding and peaceful right co-parenting relationship Understood. yeah or even compromising when it comes to like birthdays holidays right. and things like that because you know like you know, the other person has in a relationship. And sometimes yeah. mm-hmm. sometimes it can be more like you have a really awesome relationship or you're getting along and being civil and someone, but the other parent feeling some type of way about you. So that's where it's hard to compromise yeah, Keep as well. your feelings yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it doesn't always happen like that. And, you know, then you can't compromise because the sp- the spouse, you know, the the, the cope when you're trying to co-parent with the other person, you know, even if they're married, girlfriend, whatever it is, feeling some type of way towards right, you. Right. But I feel like the other person, the other parent needs to like, like, listen, you know, this is about my child. Right. It's not about how you feel. You know, this is, we need to come together as, you know, for the sake of my kid, because this is my child's day. This is... This is about him. This is not about you. This is not about how we all feeling here. Yes, we all have to come child. to. We all have to come to a mutual agreement. Agree. Um, another way to help with co-parenting, I think, uh, social media, uh, should definitely not be something that you bash your other parent on. Yeah. Um, and that's relationships. I, I personally, I think, that's relationships I, I think in anything. General, but like, yeah. but I'm not yeah. gonna get on everybody else's topics and what they put on their social media. But I feel as though bashing your your ex or your whatever the situation is, whatever you want to call your baby dad, baby mama. I think that face. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think social media is the place for that. No. To get your feelings out. If you need no. to talk to someone, you should talk to someone in private or communicate someone in private away from the children because we don't need the children hearing you talking and bashing your, right. your mm-hmm. you know, right. their father or their mother. I think social media is definitely not the way to go. I think when people post things like that on social media, that my opinion is the maturity and the level that mm-hmm. they are when it comes to, I get it, sometimes uh, they're single moms and they don't have... They have fathers these, do it too. You know what I mean? Fathers do it too. And they mm-hmm. have these baby, you know, they have these baby dads that don't do anything for them. But you're doing for them. You are doing Focus for them. Focus on the positive. Focus right. on right. the positive. They got you. If if they got you, your mama and daddy, and that's it. They right. got you and don't don't put yourself out there. Because I, then everybody yeah. is knowing your business and then like people will judge you for that. As well. I mean, I think for me, and I, I think I may just be a little bit more harsh. I just look at it different ways. Like, A, you're bashing somebody that you clearly were with. And yes. Had a child yes. With. yes. <laughs> That's a good one. That's um, a good one. That too. And secondly, like when people bash them about like things that they're not doing, I find it a little That's hard to believe. That's not going to help believe. it get done. It's not going to help <laughs> it get done. But I don't think that Timmy woke up today and said, I'm not buying Pampers. I don't think Timmy was buying Pampers. Since the whole time. I'm just saying. Right. I'm just saying. Like, so now you want to air no, it out. No, Timmy lost you his know, job. You ain't got to bash yes, him either. Like, be different. understanding. But I we just don't about think that, that these dads woke up today and decided, I'm, I'm just not going to be a dad. dad. Right. Like, mm-hmm. there clearly was a pattern somewhere down there. And you saw mm-hmm. the red flags somewhere down there. And so then. I just think that... Even if you don't care about how it makes you look, but it just really makes you look bad, like bashing the person because at the end of the day, that's still the child's dad. It's not going to change. Right. Yep. So there's no and point And that's making to, your relationship yeah. worse in regards to co-parenting. Right. Exactly. Right. We exactly. all want to get on a positive note. You yep. want those pampers. You want them sneakers. <laughs> you want money for lunch. Right. Bashing them on social media is not going to help him change. Right. No, it's not. It kind of like makes it worse. Because speak life that, onto right? it. Yeah. Can y'all pray for my... Right. Speak life into it. I and need some prayer. just don't bash him and then turn around and be with him. <laughs> oh, that makes you look even more Yes. Worse. When we yes. have... <laughs> and then you got I people see, talking I, 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 I see that all the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> 
all the time. We're working time. on things now, and this, the, you know, it you just, know, like, just be um, mindful. What yeah, you put yeah, on just gotta be media. mindful. You know, like I've had an experience. You know, I did it in the past. I admit, I mm-hmm. did, but I was in a different place, and my mentality at that time was I was still a child. Right mm-hmm. now, I do think like I give credit. Like it's different if you're on social media giving credit. To, when you know, credit's due. When right. credit is right. due. And I do that. I do that. Now that I definitely admit. And I even, you know, I'll text the father of my kids. I I be like, listen, I give you credit. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, right. I give you credit for that. Whereas credit is due. Because I feel like that's only fair. Right. You mm-hmm. know? But one thing I did learn in all that is you have to be mindful of what you put on the internet because it once it's out there you can it's delete it but it never it's goes else's. away yes. Yes. yes so i i that's something that i definitely did learn and um we should definitely be mindful oh, yes. of things Mind- like yes. that yeah mm-hmm. absolutely um what other is ways to help with co-parenting oh don't pawn your kids for revenge. Yes. I see it happen mm. all the time. Yes. You know, if you in your feelings and you in the other lane and you ain't standing in your lane and you're like, well, my child's not going with their mom this weekend or my child's not going with their dad this weekend or because they didn't come pick them up at a certain time and you mad because they were five minutes late that they yeah. can't go with them. Now, I don't. I don't think it's right for parents to use the children as... A pawn. A pawn. Yeah. Like, it, it's not right. Like, at the end of the day, we're doing what's in best interest for the child. Right. Yep. And unless it's, like, a physical situation where it's not healthy for the child, where the parent is using substance or alcohol abuse or domestic violence or molest, like, anything yeah. that's yeah. serious, yeah. I don't think there's reasonings why you should keep your kids away from their other parents. Absolutely, I and, and I agree. But remember, there's some bitterness. The bitter, yeah. and then bitter, you gotta put your stuff aside. It's just they're bitter. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think when a woman is like that, I get maybe he hurt her, but there is no need for you to use the child, right? Because you know the child that's gonna hurt him, right. or that's gonna hurt her, or either way, I don't agree to that. Period. Because however you feeling. It is what it is, but a child, the, at the end of the day, rather, how you feel towards them and how you don't want them around the other girlfriend or you see him happy because you're still miserable, it has nothing to do with you. What you need to do is be a mother and, and the parent that you are or father, put that to the side and think about your child. Your right. child comes first above all of that. Right. No, it doesn't matter the resentment and the how angry you go. are. Let it go. Right. Because the one that's going to suffer is the child. Right. Agree. And they might grow up one day to resent you as well. Mm -hmm. Because you kept them away. Right. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, So now we're going to go into blended uh, family statistics. Um, 16% of children live in blended families. The number of kids living in blended families have been stable for nearly, nearly 30 years. Children of Hispanic, black, and white backgrounds are equally likely to live in this type of family. Children from Asian families are half as likely as Hispanic, black, or white kids to be part of a blended family. Six of ten women remarriages create blended families. That's good. That's good. Do you have anything in regards to blended families? Well, I come from a black family. I have a stepfather that has raised me from the age of seven until I was about 16. Um, been on my own since I was 16. Um, anyways, um, then I have, uh, I did have a stepmother that my father, my father was married to for a few years and a girlfriend that he was with for 10 years. Um, I am the oldest from my mom's side. I am from nine. I have one full blooded brother. The rest are, have my half siblings on my father's side. I have, there's uh, about seven of us. I'm the fourth all of this. And y'all was in one household? No, I was in one household with my stepfather and my mother. I was raised majority with my mother, but I did go see my father. So, they, and growing up, there was a lot of conflict, a lot of drama, a lot of... There was just a lot both going on in both sides of the family, really. It's due to their own relationships or... My parents and my stepfather or my stepfather or my stepmother, everybody was in, never on the same page mm-hmm. and never compromise. Everybody was like, I want this, I want that. Or there was times I, periods of times that I didn't go see, I didn't see my father, you know, even though I had that urge. Um, 
I really didn't have a real relationship with my mother once she got into a relationship with my stepfather. Um, uh, yeah, it's it, it, it was a lot going on both sides of the family. So it's very blended in both sides, <laughs> especially coming from a big family in both sides. So it, it just... There was a lot, uh, yeah. a lot of conflict growing up. Yeah, and for me, um, so of course I'm I'm married, and with my husband I have two children, uh, nine months and two and a half years old, and then I have a son who is ten and he'll be eleven, and I had him from a previous relationship, so it is you know blended, blended as family. far as you know the kids go and. You know, a lot of things come into play with that. And, you know, we're definitely going to get into that, whether it be, you know, discipline or, you know, how you raise them Mm -hmm. and the good, the bad, the ins, the outs. Um, Being a blended family doesn't necessarily always have to be a bad or negative thing. Oh, no. You know, because some of us, you know, we parent differently, you know, Mm -hmm. moving forward and (laughs) we have different plans and goals and Mm -hmm. things, um, you know, that we want for the children and we kind of do want them to you know be in a healthy environment and you know grow up in that loving environment as well so um it it does have its challenges oh yeah blended families aren't perfect oh no they're not period (laughs) period um but at the same time if you're all working together for the better of the children then you know that's the goal and it, and it, it can work and it does work sometimes, so. That's good. Yeah, That's good. I, I didn't have that opportunity, like, in the beginning with my kid's father. Um, I had them to a certain uh, age until, you know, custody, but that'll be something we'll talk about. Um, but, yeah, but now, you know, we're, we have a civil relationship. You know, the kids are a little bit older. My son's 18, my daughter's 15, and we're a lot we're we're civil now you know he's married with another child now so it it i think it it, it takes time also like when when you don't get along in a, a blended right. family it could take years it took me about almost 16 years and we're in a good place now that's awesome that's, that's good great. that's good so speaking on blended families uh, we w- we're going to go into a little bit more details in regards to step parents. So before we give some roles in regards to the step parents and positive aspects of being a step parent, ladies, um, how long should a person wait until they bring the kids around the new mate? So I'm only going to speak for <laughs> me because I've been there and done that. Um When I got into the relationship with my now husband, who was my then boyfriend at the time, Mm -hmm. I just got out of a place where it took me a year and a half to actually find myself and who I was. Right. So when I was going into this relationship, it was the first time that I was going into this relationship with a clear mind, Mm -hmm. not to take care of someone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I was going into this relationship to with the goal of marriage. You you understand right. what I'm saying? You're so trying to build. I was definitely trying to build. So I took my time with it. And when I say I took my time with it, I gave us time to get to know, know each, each other, other. Mm-hmm. and know what we're both looking for. You know, is this going somewhere? And if it is going somewhere, are we both on the same page, page to lead yes. towards eventually like being minded. married? Yes. yes. So once I got to the point where I saw that, this is potentially the man that I want to spend the rest of my life with. Now, will I say this took a year? No. Will I say this took nine months? No. For me, it took six months. Now, when I say that, that may not be for everybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. I saw something that said, you don't want to wait a long time to introduce your children to the person because if your children don't like them, then what? Well, would is you that break a deal breaker for them? you? I was just about to it say. It has to be. Yeah. It has yeah. to be. There, there mm-hmm. has to be some type of deal breaker. Now, I'm not saying introduce them on day two. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> yeah, saying that. Exactly. But what I'm saying is if you feel like this is someone that you're dating and this could be a long-term possibility, I say go for it. Now, what I did, and this is just for me, I had a conversation with my son's dad and I let him know, you know, this is the relationship I'm in. I didn't get into all the details of my relationship because that's my business, but I did let him know that I was ready to introduce our son 
to my partner and gave him the opportunity, opportunity to, to meet, meet him, him first that's yes. good. Mm-hmm. before I introduced my son. Now, I will tell you this. He didn't want to meet him, but that's not my problem. Mm-hmm. I gave him the option. So I then went ahead and introduced my son to my now husband, mm-hmm. but was boyfriend at the time. They got along great, and the rest was history. Nice. Oh. Well, I've never been married. Um, I've been in other relationships. Um, I can't really say. Uh, it wasn't, they were kind of like rushed and my kids were with me. Mm-hmm. But now I'm in a different place in my life. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> totally. I've grown from that. So um, um, so now I'm just like, for me, I agree with you, Shanur, like when we talked about it earlier. I think six months is like, you know, even thinking about it, especially you talking about it. About, about six months to a year, because I was going to say a year to a year. <laughs> I think that's a little bit Realistically. Realistically, Realistically, I think about six months to a year. But I don't know how it goes, because, you know, your children are, you know, your son was younger then. My kids are older, yeah, so I don't know. So it's a little bit older, so that is something that I really Now, do you feel as though, sorry to cut you off, do okay. you feel as though with your kids being older now, do you need their judgment or do you need their approval to be in a relationship because they are older, that they're 18 and 16? I do and I don't at the same time for the simple fact that, you know, my son's 18. He's a young adult, but I would love for them to get along, mm-hmm. you right. know, okay. and so be cordial. My son, right. be co- to be cordial. You know, I don't want to come into a place where my child doesn't like my, my boyfriend or my soon to be husband. And that would be something that'll be something that I would be like, I can't be with you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And. I don't want to do that. So, mm-hmm. right. and you know, and my kids, especially now, my son, he's grown now. And now he's more like, he's protective. And mm-hmm. he's like, and they, my kids have seen what I've been through. So my daughter, she is mama's girl. So she, is, she's like, who are you talking to? Or, you know, mm-hmm. who's that? I can't even, she has a problem with sharing me. So even though she's 15, and everybody thinks, well, she's not a mama's girl. She's a dad. No, she's a mama's girl. She is very selfish with me. So, I mean, like, I think she'll get along with the person. Mm-hmm. But I've been in other relationships where she has, after the breakup, she'll be like, But I definitely feel I like, like you like should that. not wait yeah. two years. Oh, no, <laughs> two, two, That's wait, a long time. Like, but, hearing, but hearing you out made me like... You know what? She's really, and I agree with that. I, you know, so I'm gonna change my perspective on that. So yeah. And so, like I said, it may not work then, for everybody. It worked for, yeah. say, for me. I was just about to say, but my opinion in regards to that, I think every situation and circumstance mm-hmm. is different. So I think you should just use your better judgment. I oh, mean, yeah, when you're I agree. Getting to know somebody because like. There's so much different ways to communicate with people now. You got FaceTime, you got talking. Oh like, yeah, like there's a lot that can go on in a, in a month time frame. Absolutely. You can talk to people yes, for different ways. So I think, I think you just have to use your better judgment, and y'all have to be on the same page. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I'm not dating to date these days. I'm dating for a potential. So, okay, yeah, I right. don't check up. I'm married. married. So yeah. I'm dating for a potential husband. Absolutely. So if yes. you're not on the same page as me to potentially be my husband, and we're not on the same page Mm -hmm. it don't matter how long we dating at the end of the day it's not going to be the right time for you to meet my kids if we're not on the same page Mm -hmm. so i mean i think six to six months to a year is is good but at the at the end same thing it you just have to use your better judgment Mm -hmm. and they have to be comfortable with it as well yes and you also have to Know your children. Oh yeah, right. exactly. And and how you approach the situation. Right. You can't just pop up one day and be like, "Hi, this," because I know my son. He gonna ask me a million and one questions. Right. So that's something right. that I gotta address to him prior to bringing someone in the house and introducing them. Right. And if you have a good relationship with your other your ex or whatever the situation is, how mm-hmm. y'all call each other. Ask them how they would feel about it or if it's, you know, not if it's okay, but how they would feel about getting introduced when you introduce the kid as well. Because they're going to be around your child for the most time, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's just my point in regards to that. And and like you said, Sonera, like sometimes uh, some certain children don't get that chance. Sometimes like they don't even know the parent is dating Mm -hmm. and... 
the parent ends up showing up with a boyfriend and the kids are like, uh, well, well, who's this? Right, right. I know that because I experienced that. I didn't even know my mom had a boyfriend. I woke up one day and he was there. He was yeah, my stepfather. I don't think that oh, that. So, shacking yeah. up and already. I, and, so, yeah. and that, like, that is an experience yeah. for Smooth me. Smooth transition. Like, it was, like, like I said, like in my past, like my, from my experience, you know, I didn't, just bring the guy into the home. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I let them. But it was a little bit too early that I should have mm-hmm. never done that. But like I said, now that my kid's a little bit older and I'm in a different place because I'm not building. From I, I want a boy. I don't want right. a boyfriend. I'm looking for a husband now. Right. So right. now it's different where I'm going to let my kids know, like, yeah, I'm talking to somebody, but you're not going to meet them anytime soon. You'll meet that when the time is right. Right. Or if he is the one for me. Got it. Until then, yeah. Right, so, right. Mm-hmm. So we got on the point in regards to when... It's a good time to introduce uh, your partner or the person you're dating with your children. And again, use your judgment. Uh, now let's speak on the next step, disciplining. Uh, mm. How do you feel in regards to step parents uh, disciplining children? Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah, that can be. That is very tough. That can be very tricky because I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Even after I got married. There would be some things like, like say my son would ask for something and my husband would be like, no, I don't think he needs that. And I would almost do like a side turn. Like, what you, like, what you mean? <laughs> like, he don't need that. Uh-huh. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. like, who are you to, but then like, hold, pump your brakes. This is your husband. And clearly he's saying that for a reason, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I think, um, you get to a place in your relationship or mm-hmm. your marriage where, I'm not necessarily saying anything needs to be physical, you know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, yeah. No. You know, but but I do think at some point the person needs, to, especially if it, you know, is a husband or someone you've been with long enough that the kid, you know, knows them say and so. has a right. relationship yeah. with them, they have a say-so because that's where the respect comes barrier into comes into right. play. Because if, if stepdad or said, you know, long-term boyfriend or girlfriend has been in the picture for a while and your child doesn't respect them, then where where is it going? What are we right. doing here? Right. You know what I mean? So at some point you have to be willing to know, you know, but that's where boundaries come in. Right. Where you know <laughs> we discuss, you know, we sit down and we discuss how certain things are handled or there may be something that happens with my son where I sit down with my husband because I need his opinion on it. Right. You yes. know, how do, how do we handle this? Or, you know, Milan, let's just say, for instance, my son's been a straight A student, but let's say, okay, he comes home with a D. How do we handle this? How do we, you know, get to the bottom of this? What do we do? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? How do I talk to him about right. this? You know, yeah. sometimes. So it's like with the other parent, you have to be able to let them step up in their role Mm -hmm. so that the child maintains the respect barrier between not only just you, but the the step parent as well. You brought up a good point. I think, and, and it's never too, too early to ask those type of questions. How do you discipline your kids when you're dating? How do you discipline your kids? If, if this scenario came into place, if we're, we're together, what would be your response in regards to grades or or misbehaving in school. Yeah. Um, I think both step parents and biological parents, they should have some type of agreement in regards to stuff uh, in the household and standards with the children when it comes to disciplining. So um, you bring, brought up some good points in regards to getting advice from your step, uh, from your husband as well. Right. How about you? Yeah, well, from experience, uh, like I said, like, or talk, like we were just talking on blended families. Um, From my experience, uh, my mom had a boyfriend and then he became the father. So I got, I was disciplined, not just verbally, but physically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when there's some families where the mother would get, you know, get married and the father comes in and he thinks he has full control. Mm -hmm. So once they come with the full control, that's when you do what they tell you because I'm the stepfather. Your father's not here. So you he's the authority over me because now he's my father so that's from my experience so that's what i had i didn't have that for my kids and i used to let the men that i was with like listen you can't put your hands on my kids um you are not going to talk to them a certain way Mm -hmm. you're not you know i made a lot of mistakes in the end because sometimes i made it let it slip up i'm not going to be real as i can but now i'm going to like i said 
things are different now and they're older and my kids will let me know and tell me whatever but now i'm looking to get married so now it's like now i can get to that place where we'll talk about how you discipline your children especially if he has kids right you know because you know when you're getting married like you have mm -hmm. you become a blended family yep. so yeah i didn't have that growing up i didn't have that where my mom you know or talk to me or talk to him i don't know how it went like i said and i just it was just a lot of control growing up and that can affect the child as well so i hope you ladies that when you are dating someone to really talk to them about discipline and because one your child always comes first and that things that go on because especially get to know this person before mm -hmm. you marry them mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you don't know mm -hmm. they could be the most sweetest person when the Things happen behind closed doors when you're right, not around. Right, right, right. And I just want to make one extra point in that. Um, just, you know, from self-experience, even, you know, if, if you do get to a point where you can sit down with the other said party, like, for instance, you guys are separated, but the other party starts dating someone else, mm -hmm. I think that, you know that could be a conversation for you too because that that's right. what I did. Mm -hmm. Um I didn't wait for my son's dad to say, you know, well this is how we discipline. I had a conversation with her. Right. And I let her know from the beginning, listen, I'm not being rude, I'm not being disrespectful or anything like that, but I just want to let you know moving forward that I would just ask that in the beginning, at this point, you leave discipline to his dad. And the only reason why I said that, because I do not control what goes on in that household. Right. But A, they don't live together, they're not married, and you haven't been together that long to be disciplining my kid. Now, I'm not saying that my kid is running out, beating somebody up down in the street. That's different. That's different. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But definitely don't put your hands on my kid. Period. That's... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not That's, a no -no. That. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. I think with step-parents, I think they should focus on building a relationship with the kids in Agreed. the beginning more than trying to discipline. Uh, like I said, you know, that's an agreement that y'all both have to have. Mm -hmm. um, I feel as though some people, not all, some step-parents take it upon themselves to feel as though that from the absence of the other parent that they are the parent now. Yeah. When you're not in a place to be the parent, Colin, you're... Nope. you're Yep. At that time, in the beginning, you're yep. you're right. in a place to just be the supporter right. for yeah. the other parents. Exactly. And I feel as though people, you know, that boundary is not set in stone. And that's something that has to be taken um, in initiative in the beginning. You know, what your goals are and what your relationship and what your point is in the relationship. I believe, though, in the beginning, a step parent should just be the supporter. Yep. Unless y'all married, unless y'all serious, you know, that's when those other agreements come into place. But that's my personal opinion. Um, again, I've never been married, uh, but that's what I'm expecting when my boo comes. <laughs> yeah, so when right, you listen right, to right, this, <laughs> <on it. laughs> so existence. when you listen to this, like, nah. <laughs> Speak it into existence. But, but, um, but I do agree with what you're saying, Shanara, because, you know, like, even with the, the stepdads that the, there's an absentee father and... The good stepdads that actually, you know, come in there and generally pick up where the father the left absence. off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And actually genuinely adopt the child and love the child. And, you know, even, even it doesn't matter even from the baby to teenagers. Right. There's right. guys that just step in right. and be like, you know what? Your dad's not here. I'm going to be your dad. Right. right. You can, I'm not expecting you to call me daddy. But they end up calling them daddy. Right. You right. know? And that's that, their choice. That's though. their choice. Yeah, but you I should do force think it on them. in all this... That as the parent, you still set the tone. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yeah. You still definitely set the tone. Do it all. Yes. You, you set the tone and the expectation mm -hmm. moving forward. Yes. Just saying. That's good. That's good. Yes. Children feel as though, you know, that it's their fault when all reality is it's not their fault. We just, you know, we just want to come to common grounds and making sure that everyone's happy at the end of the day. Right. And I mean, even though... Um, you know, with the divorce, each person, whether it be, you know, the man or the woman, you want to try to keep things as natural flowing, you know, for yes. the kids, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a very big change. And like you said, most times, you know, some of it's depending on the age, the kid thinks that it's their fault. Um, but then outside of that, 
you want to find yourself because sometimes people are married for so many years they lose <laughs> that you lose yourself right. yep. you know in the marriage oh, or yes. in the person or in your family in general yeah so you want to kind of always keep the children first take time to find out you know who you are as right. a person as this new person by yourself and then my last thing in that is just don't lose yourself in the breakup or the divorce so yeah, thing. and uh, I've seen a lot of that happen um, from friends and family members, and it, it it causes the children are the ones that suffer through it all. They go through uh, identity uh, crisis. They go through, it, and like you said, it depends on the age as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've seen it all where, you know, especially when it comes to um, custody. Right. Right. Um, custody. Um, I've been through that um, with that. I mean, I was never married to the father of my kids, but we went through a custody battle. Um, we had both joint custody of our kids. Um, my kids previously are primarily living with him, though, but, you know, they're older now, and uh, it wasn't an easy uh, thing to deal with for, uh, for a few years, but um, things do get better. So, ladies, don't ever doubt that things will ever get better. It will. They do. There's they life do. after yeah, a divorce break up. Yeah, right. break up. <laughs> Divorce yeah. or breakup. You know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, certain people don't go through custody battles. You know, they go by verbal agreements or... But sometimes that doesn't always work, you know, because things happen. A person can change up or they can have a spouse or they're getting married or, you know, like I said... Uh, but yeah, that is something that you always got to think about as well and just keep that in mind. I have found some interesting um, statements in regards to uh, divorced parents from helpguide.org. Um, it says the key to, the key to success co-parenting is to separate your personal relationship with your ex. And I think that's very important in regards to um, compromising and being on the same page in regards to the children. You know, you want to have the children feel that they're secure and that they're confident when they're with both parents. Um, the kids adjust differently depending on how deep and how old they are with the yes. divorce. So new living so situations may be different um, in different households as well as um, giving them self-esteem in regards to who they are, you know, continue to show them that they are loved and that you know, your situation that you're going through has nothing to do with them, like I said before. Um, and better understanding what problem solving. Uh, children who see their parents continuing to work together is more than likely um, have an effective and peaceful, uh, healthy relationship in the future. So we definitely want to continue to show some positive aspects when you're going through a divorce, no matter what the argument or what the situation was when you guys were together. Um, I think a healthy situation, um, healthy relationship in any situation is actually better for the child in the long run. Agreed. Um, yes, I agree as well. Speaking on co-parenting, um, I know there's times when we do have some people that are difficult to communicate with in regards to co-parenting. So I do want to speak on that. Now, co-parenting is basically like a partnership with the other parent. Yes. So that's basically like, you know, even though y'all aren't together, but y'all have some type of friendship or some type of an agreement where there's it's not one sided. Um, I feel as though well, I have read on um a web it was on a website. Uh, I can't think of the name on the website, but it basically said like when you're dealing with a a controlling parent on the other end, mm -hmm. it's not considered co parenting. It's considered parallel parents parenting mm -hmm. where what goes on in your house is your world versus what goes on their household is their world mm -hmm. and we have to come to an agreement well a realization that we can't control something else that's happening outside of our household yep. or outside of your yep. household you got to be able to let your children go to their parents house and come back to your house and let them know hey back in mommy's house or back in daddy's house this is the rules in my house you know when you're with your father i understand that's what they let you do but in our household this is what we're going to do you have to express that to the children because sometimes children don't understand the the difference in right. each household and 
they're they're confused. Children don't have the mindset as an adult. So when you don't explain those type of situations to a child, they're feeling as though you're being the bad parent or you're being the mean parent because they don't they're not understanding why you do things. So like for example, if your child's bedtime in your household is eight thirty and when he's with or he or she is with the other parent and they don't have a bedtime, communicate with them. Hey, in my household, your your bedtime is this time because when it's time to get up for school or when we got to go do something, you're dragging in the morning. Or yep. I, I got to tell you three and four times to do something. <clears throat> and to avoid the confrontation in the morning, this is why your bedtime is a certain time frame. Right. Or this is why you need, you're, you're technically supposed to have 11 to 12 hours at your age to sleep. So it's okay to communicate that with the child. Um, another thing is very important when someone's trying to be controlling, I believe... The word for it is narcissist. Um, communication. Keep communication to the minimum. Let it just be focusing on the children. Don't let it focus on anything outside of the children. Don't get your feelings involved. Don't let them get under your skin because sometimes they will send you a whole paragraph or a whole message in regards to one question <laughs> that you asked yep, and you right. still didn't get the question answered. Right. Uh -huh. Focus on what you want. Focus on the goal. So if you have a question and they and they answer it, keep it moving. Thank you. Have a nice day. But if it's not being answered, ask the question again. And if you're unable to talk to them and it's a whole bunch of confrontation going on, revisit it at a later time. Hey, I'm not sure what's going on in your side, but I just want to get this across and I'm not able to get it across. Let me know when you're able to communicate and answer the questions that I ask and leave it at that. If it's an argument in person and it's better for you guys to, to text or email, especially if you're going through a custody situation, that's always good for proof as well. So um, try to avoid any confrontation for people that try to stay in control of everything. Did you want to add anything? No, I just pretty yeah. much, you know, I agree exactly, you know, with what you say. You just want to stay on the same page. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said previously, hear each other out. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, keep the child and what's best, you know, for the child mm -hmm. right up front, front and center. That way there's no miscommunications, misunderstandings, nope. and there's no confusion, um, you know, in regards to the child. Because like you said, this household is going to run completely different. Yep. You want it as much as you want to run on the same page. And it would be a blessing <laughs> if you did run on the same page, um, you know, but you got to kind of got to know the tone right. of the relationship. And I say that in a sense of if this is going on at this house, that's what's going on over there. As long as it's not hurting or harming the child, mm -hmm. then you pretty much have to stay in your lane right. and, you know, worry about what goes on when the child comes to your home. Well, yeah, like, and again, like from experience, I've experienced uh, what Shanara spoke about. Um, I had that, uh, but with a lot of prayer, <laughs> a lot of prayer, thank mm -hmm. God to the good gracious Lord above. <laughs> You know, uh, we've gotten to a civil part in our lives, and and believe me, it it it's, it that takes a lot of energy out. It, it takes a mm -hmm. lot of. It takes like sometimes you question yourself, mm -hmm. right? And then like, even sometimes when instead of them like we're ch child focused on the child, um, you know, keeping everything child focused, they worry about what you do, who's or what you're doing in your personal, who's around the child, and where are you at with the child, and all of that. So yeah, I I have experienced that and it it, it 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 it's a lot. It's a lot that and then, and then the kids gotta see see that right. and mm -hmm. the kids deal with that in a way and well to the good gracious of God, things are better now. So yeah, it just this is something that you need to like really discuss with the parent. That's why like you said, everything has to be clear and listen to each other and compromise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So just remember before we wrap it up to <clears throat> ask for X's opinion if you guys are on that type of relationship for improving improving with co-parenting. Apologize when you're wrong, you know. Uh if y'all have a disagreement and you feel as though you went around you went about it the wrong way, it's okay to apologize because that can bring peace into the relationship as yes. well. And, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. If they're five, ten minutes late from picking up the kids or dropping the kids off, let it go. You never know what happened before they actually got into the vehicle. You never know what type of traffic it is. Like, try to try to be... <clears throat> 
positive and peaceful no matter what you got going on or what plans you have because you never know what the situation is until they get there. And you don't want them to be rushing trying to get back to you because you always got an attitude or so much animosity and then, God forbid, something happens. So they do have the children in the car at the end of the day. Try to be at least respectful or <clears throat> understanding with situations and things like that. Um, so before we wrap it up, I do want to say thank you to Jasmine Kuhnhau for coming back out with us thank and joining for with us for me. our topic. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, please remember to stay on common.